Hey everybody, Matt Siltala here with Dave Rohr, uh, looking at episode two of our Business of Digital podcast episodes. And so I'm really excited. We finally uh, started this series and we're we're on to episode two. You don't know how big of a hurdle that is in and of itself. And uh, today we're going to be talking about social media. We're going to be talking to the small to medium business owner. And a lot of what we're talking about today um, you know, the personal use versus the business use of social media. We're going to be getting into Twitter, Facebook, Yelp, Snapchat, all fun stuff like that. And so uh, really helping you understand how you can use it for, you know, the branding side of things, the, the personal use, uh, you know, what platforms, uh, you know, work best in different situations. And again, a lot of stuff that uh, as the episode goes, you know, who knows where it will will take us. We also got a lot of awesome tools to share with you. And I'm not talking about Dave or myself. Uh, lame pun. Uh, my kids would call that a lame dad joke, Dave. But anyway, go ahead and uh, take it away, Dave. Uh, introduce yourself and then we'll get this started. Thank you, sir. So yeah, Dave Roar from Northside Metrics. And we just thought this was an interesting topic because as marketers, we're always the first ones to try to clamor and get access to any sort of new so social network that comes out and usually the goal other than you know we just want access and to reserve our own names <laughs> is to yep. start kicking it around and start poking holes in it and understanding you know how to optimize for it how to use it how to leverage it not for us but for any of our clients um, especially those that are producing content or already very active on social uh, trying to understand you know from an advertising standpoint from a branding you know, customer service, how can we use it and where is it going to make sense? Um, and I think I'll let Matt take on his first kind of how he started using, I don't know, what Yelp, we'll say. Yeah, Yelp. Uh, I have a love-hate relationship with Yelp because uh, I started using it. It was one of my first, like, heavy-use uh, social media platforms. And I used it so much that for several years in a row, I actually got the the Yelp elite status, you know, not that that means anything or that it did anything for me really, other than, you know, hey, pat myself on the back, I use Yelp too much, but <laughs> um, they did take it away from me because they somehow uh, found out that I am a business owner and they think that there's some kind of a a, a conflict there, which, whatever, uh, I, I understand. But yeah, Yelp was one of those ones that uh, I first got into because I started seeing the power of, of what it would do. Uh, in fact, when I first moved out to this area that I'm at, um, it was back in 2007. And so uh, I think uh, a year later or so, I can't remember exactly when it was, but uh, I found this restaurant and one of the first Yelp reviews I, I did was uh, this local spot. And, and it turned out being amazing and and I went there several times and it was never super busy and I remember thinking to myself you know I really hope that this business uh, stays out here because we need a mom and pop shop like this we need a really good it was a deli style uh, restaurant really amazing food the guys uh, the you know that started it they had decided to put everything into this they had really good recipes and they just wanted to uh, give it a go at the restaurant business and you know if you know anything about that in and of itself, that right there is a tough, uh, you know, tough nut to crack, if you will, and, and, and being a successful restaurant. And you think about all the places that you know when, when new restaurants go in and how many restaurants end up going in that place afterwards. And so uh, it's definitely not something that's easy. And so it was one of those ones that I really liked. And so um, I've been hearing about Yelp and, and Yelp this and Yelp that. And so I, I got the app and I started... Uh, figuring out what it was and so I looked and this place wasn't listed and so it was uh, I actually added them and I was one of the first reviews and then um, you know I posted about it on Facebook and I just shared with people about it and so um, anyway long story short and, and again I, I kind of you know it, it's the I don't know how to explain this but you know it's it's awesome that it's done so well for them but it also sucks at the same time because it started getting them like so busy that I almost don't like going there anymore. Um, and I'm not saying that it was just because of my review, but I know that that started help getting them um, launched and, and compared it to, you know, compared to all the other places out here at the time, you know, this place had, had five star averages 
and there was like um, 30 to 40 reviews where most other other places around here you know had like maybe one or two reviews and so it wasn't something that that uh, people were using a lot but for this particular one people really liked it and I think it's because I got on there and I set up their listing right and I made sure everything was accurate and I left them, left them a really good review and I always took pictures when I went there and so it was one of those things and, and the owner actually even noticed and he came and talked to me about it uh, you know and, and always hooked me up with uh, you know and I didn't do it for this reason but it always hooked me up with something some kind of a dessert or free entree or something he recognized um, what I had done and these guys you know many many years later are still there are still a solid like four and a half stars with hundreds and hundreds of reviews and they've they really understand social media now they interact with their customers on social media um, and they understand the different platforms they understand that there's people that uh, use them on Yelp they understand the the Yelp elites they understand the regular users of Yelp um, the do's and don'ts and the whole people love us on Yelp side of it and and uh, they understand the importance of, of of the analytics and the different tools that that Yelp provides the business owner um, but that kind of helped them understand just social media in general and so when Twitter came along and or, or for them if, if you will and when they started using Facebook more heavily and some of these other ones that you're going to be talking about you know it didn't scare them they embraced it and they understood that hey we run a good business uh, we're gonna have an opportunity and so uh, that's what a lot of these platforms can do it just allows you to you know for free essentially to get your content out there I mean the pictures that people take that's your content you know that's the business's content they could do stuff with it the reviews they write of you that's the business's content um, that's all the user generated type content and you just monitoring that and making sure that you're you're up to date and, and uh, you know that it's all looking good like that's some of the responsibility that you have for sure but uh, again there's power in those kind of, uh, of sites and you know that's kind of what I thought when we first started uh, thinking about this uh, Dave was just making sure that you go in there uh, to Yelp that you get everything set up correctly you claim a business listing uh, you take advantage of the tools that they have to offer and then maybe we could talk a little bit about some of the things you do or don't need from Yelp um, they do have a pay to play system but I think if you're a, a business that has a good product and people love you and you could get reviews that way um, you know there's again we could, we could have a whole topic you know a whole episode just on Yelp but uh, maybe I ought to be quiet and let you chime in here for a second <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, so I just was looking, um, I think I started using Twitter in 07. Yeah. So uh, what year is it? Yeah, so I, I earlier this year I passed 10 years, which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah, I think that's... I've been on there just as long, if almost not longer than Facebook. Not quite, but quite a long time. Um, and I've kind of always tried stuff. Um, and even on my Facebook, often I'll, I will post stuff just to see it. I'll post it privately. I'll post it just so only I can see it, just to see how things show up. Yeah. Um, I'll post my own websites on there just to see if someone was to share a page on Facebook, you know, what will show up what, yeah. what, from the page title and the, what images will show up. Um, I'm working with a client right now where the, pay, the, the images that are showing up is actually the app to download and not any sort of branding. Wow, that's interesting. Which is a problem. Yeah, big yeah, time. And it's just, you know, using my own personal accounts to test it and to see what would show up. Um, but also at the same time from, you know, Twitter and just Snapchat, I poke around on Snapchat a lot and, you know, Twitter I still use, but Snapchat and Instagram, it's, you know, when you start looking at the Facebook Live and the, the Instagram stories and how can you leverage Snapchat, I follow some big businesses, I follow some small businesses on my personal accounts. Every so often I interact or, you know, I'll check out what they're doing. But I'm always looking for ideas um, I'm always trying to figure out and understand how similar businesses would be using it from a restaurant to um, I, I've been talking with some breweries but then also you know SaaS solutions you know whatever your business is mm -hmm. trying to understand how your audience and other people might be using it and then trying to leverage it that way uh, a couple months ago my wife and I were out at dinner and a woman that worked clearly worked there was walking around and she had a little like camera phone I forget what it was I think it was a phone in her hand 
and she was walking around really slowly around the dinner time, like, you know, the entire restaurant. <laughs> and when I saw her walk by later, I, I was just curious. I was like, so was that for Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook? I'm like, what are you doing? And they were taking over the week, they were taking some video each night and then they were going to leverage it for a new kind of video on the site. They were going to use it for their Instagram and they were going to use it some other places. Nice. So, you know, just having someone do that every night and, you know, if you have someone that can edit video or even basic, you know, kind of stuff, it's, it's interesting just to kind of play with it and just to see what you can do. Yeah. Um, I prefer to test things on my own accounts and not my clients. Um, I also like to be able to, you know, if you can understand how to use Twitter and Facebook, you won't have to pay someone. You won't have to have um, an intern. You won't have to have someone else that works there or a manager if you're a restaurant, you know, or um, someone else that could be doing other things. Well, that makes a big difference for a small business owner, too, because a lot of times they don't have a big budget. And plus, then, yep. you're, then you're not making that mistake of, of uh, posting from the wrong account or something when you're having someone else manage it, you know? So, I mean, there's always that side of it to worry about. Yeah, um, and I think that's a good segue into just some a couple tools that I use um, or can recommend. And there's a couple things like IFT, so it's I-F-T-T-T, -T -T, or Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R. Zapier has some limits, IFT is free, um, but Zapier is also free. It'll help you cross out, um, post stuff. And again, you know, if you want to automate some stuff or if you want to post something to Twitter and Facebook at the same time or, you know, wherever you're trying to do it, do it on your personal account with those first. Again, I'm always about testing things um, in dev. I'm a former developer. I like to test things. I don't like to push things live to a client um, or even when I was in-house. I would test things on my own before I pushed it live because I really didn't want my VP or the CEO walking over to my desk. Well, so, and, and the worst thing that, that could happen in a situation like that is is when you send over something and you tell them, hey, look, look, this is live, all ready to go, and then you forgot to do one of those steps, and then they come back and say, well, did you look and see what this, what comes up when you put this URL in Facebook? Like, it's broken, yeah. nothing works. Or did you try hitting the pin it button? You know, like, let's say we're working on a campaign that, that they really want to focus with something on Pinterest and or that audience, and hey, did you see what happens when you hit that pin it button? It just completely breaks. And so, yeah, to your point, always test, yes. Yeah, I, I have a Pinterest account. I don't actively use it. But like you just said, uh, the reason I do have it is I was trying to understand how best to use it. And I often use it for testing my client stuff, you know, it, especially for e-commerce and some fashion or some, you know, some of the e-commerce, especially the e-commerce that I've worked with in the past. If someone was to pin their stuff to a board, what did it look like? Right. Absolutely. Now, one of the uh, tools that I use, and, and just because you were mentioning some tools, uh, one of the ones that we use that helps, and, and again, I, got, I don't know if this would count more as a, uh, as a content calendar, but it works with social media and helping you keep things organized, but something that, that people could use. We use a, a program called CoSchedule. And so um, that's something that maybe people can look into as well. And we could probably have a whole episode about, about you know, content calendars down the road, and maybe we will. But um, one of the things that uh, I'd like you to talk about a little bit is, is uh, the 80-20 rule for posting, uh, Dave, you know, listening versus posting. And so uh, why don't you give us some information on how you think to go best about that with uh, how to use social media with, you know, listening versus posting how often should i be posting because one of the questions that we always get from clients and i know you do too is is you know how much should i post to instagram or how much should i snapchat or how much should i facebook or whatever it might be you know and it's funny you mentioned that because i just did a talk about digital marketing 101 and i think literally the second question that was asked was I run this type of business. We post three times a day to Facebook. We post two times to Twitter. Is that enough or should I post more? Huh. And I was like, whoa, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, so to answer the first question, the 80-20 rule, it's, and I don't know if it's a rule. I mean, all rules are made to be broken to some extent, but. General guidelines, if you will. General guidelines. <laughs> there we go. Much better. Um, yeah. 
we've all seen the Facebook or we've all, you know, connected with someone on Twitter or Facebook and literally every post is come buy our stuff or 20% off sale or you know, the, the same post every single day, three times a day for an entire month. Yeah, I, um, I actually run a group, um, my, my local neighborhood group, and I actually had to talk to a lady, you know, set her aside and just be like, hey, I want you to be a part of this group because you're a part of this neighborhood, but you, you, you can't post the same exact thing every morning at the same time about this same business. Like that's bad social media, not to mention it's super spammy and the, the group doesn't want that, but I'm here to teach you a lesson. Like this is my business and my industry. And I know this, like that's just gonna, it's that's solid. gonna make people hate your business is what it's gonna yeah, do. <laughs> that's what it'll do. Yeah, it really will. Because I'll just be like, wow, I'm never going there. They annoy me so much. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but the 80, 20 is, you know, if you're an exterminator, Share lots of content about, you know, ants so that people understand ants or, you know, or um, I saw something recently about um, the silver, um, the silver fish or something like that. It's like this annoying, scary little thing that my wife just screams about <laughs> yes. um, versus a centipede, which in actually we want in my house. I found out after I just, you know, had just taken care of one um, because it eats cockroaches and it eats those silver things and it eats ants and it eats all this other stuff. I was like, Oh, so basically that helps clean up stuff for me. I had no idea, you know, but if you're an exterminator to share content like that, education, funny stuff within reason and, you know, avoiding political stuff, but within reason to share kind of educational stuff or local news. And then every so often say, Hey, by the way, you know, we're having a, and, and don't even like hard sell them having like, Hey, we're having a special for all our, you know, followers or something. You could, there's a way you could work yeah. that in without being that hard seller all the time. Yep. You know, it, it, maybe just every Thursday, you know, have the special of the week. If you're a restaurant say, Hey, this week, if you come in, you can get a free dessert this weekend. If you mention this, um, or if you're, you know, or a free appetizer or, or something really small just to see how many people come in and, you know, kind of gauge it. But, It'd be a soft sell, not like, hey, come buy this, um, like some of the posts that you were just talking about. One of the one of the things that I thought was interesting and, uh, um, you know, I, I think is worth sharing there lo locally, there's a guy here, he calls himself the garbage guy and he has a truck, a couple trucks. And basically, you know, you call him up and tell him how much garbage you have uh, to haul off and he'll come and he'll haul it off and, you know, charge you a certain amount per load or can't remember exactly what it is, but you, you think, okay, garbage, like how interesting can garbage be for, you know, the internet? Okay. Well, he has an Instagram account that is amazing. Like I follow it specifically for the reason of what kind of stuff is this dude going to find today? And, um, it's interesting to, to see kind of what, ha what has happened as he's grown this uh, account. Like number one, I started following it because like the stuff that people have him come and haul off, like, I mean, he's got some stuff uh, that would make, you know, the hoarders show look bad that they, you know, houses that they clean out. Yeah. But there's also some interesting stuff that he comes across. And what the accounts evolved into is, you know, you, you follow it for stuff like that and awesome stuff. But there's some stuff he comes across that people are wanting him to just haul off. That's like awesome. And there's people that were like, hey, don't throw that away. I'll buy it from you, you know. And so it's super interesting to see how he's turned the, the use of social media into, into that. Like, for example, the other day he posted these, like, I, I don't know if they're Christmas decorations, but they look like saguaro cactuses, but they were all in that like tinsel stuff with lights and they're all lit up and they work. And I, and I, uh, and I was like, Oh, I showed my wife. I was like, these are awesome. And she just like looked at me. No. <laughs> so you know i thought it was awesome but uh you know she didn't but stuff like that happens and so again you know you think about okay a garbage business like how awesome is a garbage business going to be online with social media but it works the way that they're doing it so they basically took a a, a instagram and almost created a, a second revenue channel from it yeah absolutely so i think that's a great uh, uh segue into the end of this uh episode um, just for me kind of wrapping it up, uh, again with, you know, I think episode three, we're going to get into the more specifics of, of what, uh, you know, uh, what social network that you should be using. 
But I think at this point, just helping you understand, like, you know, don't, don't, the thing that drives me the, the most nuts when I hear people talk or, you know, speak on this topic and they don't know what they're doing is when they try to tell you how you should use these certain, um, these certain networks, you know, like, like there's one blanket rule for all of them, which there's not. Um, you may, you, yeah, it would, it would, it would be a little bit easier, but you know what? Some people may use, uh, Twitter for, uh, means of communicating their, their information. And then some people may use it for a strictly customer service. Some people may use Instagram specifically for selling and they may use Facebook for something else. And then, you know, someone may use Snapchat specifically just for, uh, promotion or, or awareness. And, and anyway, so that just when you're getting into this, don't think that you have to figure this out and become an expert in all of them at once. Uh, let's figure out what ones work the best for you and uh, go from there. Yep. Perfect. Thank you, sir. All righty. We will see everybody same time next week. Thank you guys. Bye.